If you've been following this channel, you've probably heard of Meshtastic from the deep dive videos we've done on it, but there's a newcomer in the Mesh radio space you may not have heard of called Meshcore. We're kicking off a new series on Meshcore, and in today's video, we're breaking down what it is, how it works, all in a simple, easy to understand way, even if you're completely new to Mesh radio technology. So join me and let's check it out. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. For those familiar with Meshtastic, Meshcore shares the same core goal, and that's being an open source, text based, encrypted communications platform built around inexpensive LoRa radio hardware that works completely off grid without relying on cell phone towers or Wi Fi. But Meshcore takes a few different approaches. Now, before we go any deeper, this video isn't meant to be an in-depth comparison between Meshcore and Meshtastic. That'll come later on in the series. Today's video is just a quick introduction to Meshcore and the basics of how it works. We'll dive deeper into the details in future videos in this series, so be sure to hit that subscribe button below. Before we can get into those deep dives, we got to start off with the basics on how Meshcore works. For a standard setup, you'll have a radio device running the Meshcore firmware paired to your phone over Bluetooth. And for those of you already using Meshtastic, the good news is that much of the same hardware is compatible if you want to give Meshcore a try. The radio device itself actually has two radios built into it. One is a short range Bluetooth radio that links your radio device to your phone. And the other is a lower radio, which is short for long range. And this one handles the communications with other Meshcore devices in your area. Now there's a few different firmware options depending on what you want your device to do. The first is companion firmware, which lets you connect your radio to your phone running the Meshcore app so you can text back and forth with others. Now maybe you live in a great spot up on the hill or mountain or you're part of a ham radio club with access to antenna towers. If so, you can load firmware that lets your device act as a repeater rebroadcasting messages it receives to help extend the network's range. There's even a few supported off-the-shelf solar-powered setups that work great for repeater installations. And finally, you can load room server firmware, which turns your device into kind of a chat room with memory. A good way to think about it is these are like a message board where users can post messages for others to read later, but not necessarily for communicating back and forth like a normal chat conversation. Normally, your device has to be on and in range to send and receive messages, but with the room server, you can reconnect later and still see messages that were posted while you were offline or out of range of the mesh network. Now, when it comes to seeing other users on the network, Meshcore takes a bit of a different approach from Meshtastic. In Meshtastic, devices will periodically transmit to announce themselves to the mesh. Meshcore, on the other hand, is focused on keeping radio traffic to a minimum to increase message reliability. So instead of automatically announcing, you have to manually send what's called an advert, which broadcasts your presence to the mesh. Now for devices running repeater or room server firmware, these adverts are sent automatically, but at a much lower frequency. The default is every 12 hours, and this can be adjusted at intervals anywhere from 3 to 48 hours. Now let's take a look at an example of sending a direct message to a user using a mesh cord network with these components in place. So Bob's down here and wants to send a message to Jim all the way up here. Luckily there's several mesh core devices in between them acting as repeaters. Bob's using the mesh core app on his phone paired to his radio running the companion client firmware. When Bob types a message to Jim and hits send, his phone sends it over the Bluetooth to his radio which then transmitted over the lower radio for other mesh core devices to receive. This very first message from Bob uses what's called flood routing. This means the message gets picked up by every repeater within range of Bob's radio. Those repeaters then rebroadcast it to others in their range. And this continues until one of them is close enough to reach Jim's radio. Now, as you can see, this flood routing method is pretty noisy and there's a lot of radios talking at once to get that first message through. Now, here's where Meshcore does something really handy. During that first flood message, the repeaters are recording the path they take to reach Jim's radio. Then that path information gets passed along to Jim. Now that Jim's radio knows the most efficient route back to Bob, his reply takes that direct path 
rather than flooding the network again. From that point on, Bob and Jim can chat using this cleaner and faster route, which drastically reduces network traffic and makes communication more reliable and efficient. Now, if something breaks along that route at some point, like a repeater going offline, messages will fail to deliver. After three failed delivery attempts, the system automatically switches back to the flood routing method to find a new path, then takes that new direct path once it's found. Now, to be fair, MeshTastic also does something similar now with direct messages and their next hop routing feature that they implemented in version 2.6. One thing that sets MeshCore apart, though, is that if you already know the path you want to take to reach that other user, you can set that in the app and skip the flood routing entirely. It's a pretty cool feature, and for those of you familiar with APRS or packet radio in the ham radio world, it's similar to setting the path of the call signs of the digipeters you want your packets to travel through. Now, when it comes to chatting with a group of people, like in the default public chat room, those messages are all sent using the flood method. And that's true for both MeshTastic and MeshCore, since there's really no way around it when you're talking to a group that's spread out across a wide area. And that brings us to the last part of MeshCore that we'll cover in this video, and that's room servers. As mentioned earlier, these work like a message board where users can post messages for others to read later. Users need to log into room servers or be granted access through an access control list. Each room server has a password, so you can leave this as the default of hello so anyone can access it, or change it to your own custom password to restrict access. Now behind the scenes, room servers work like direct messages, so that direct path feature we mentioned earlier for direct messages also applies to room servers. And that does it for this quick overview of MeshCore. There aren't many MeshCore users here in my area of East Tennessee, but we're looking to change that with some new deployments coming soon. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and follow along with our MeshCore journey. Now, if you're already running MeshCore in a larger network or you've been experimenting with it, I'd love to hear how it's working for you. So drop your experiences down in the comment section below. But that'll do it for this one, though, and I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because we have much more content on the way. Thank you all and have a good one. Now behind the scenes, room servers work like direct messages, so that direct path feature we mentioned earlier for direct messages also applies to room servers. And that does it for this quick overview of MeshCore. There aren't many MeshCore users here in my area of East Tennessee, but we're looking to change that with some new deployments coming soon. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and follow along.